Let's see if it starts. So absolutely no crank. Everyone, welcome back to Pine Hollow Auto Diagnostics. Today uh, we're doing a trip to upstate New York and stopping by a shop here right on the border. We have a 2003 Chevy Silverado. It's a classic V8. And the shop owner here, he left a note for me. It says, uh, Ivan, have a battery, battery tender on. Didn't want to unhook the battery and lose codes. Okay, three issues. No start when key turned uh, intermittent comes and goes use jumper wire off relay to battery and it starts that's to the starter relay okay battery drain evap code so right off the bat I threw a voltmeter on this battery we got 12.4 volts we uh, disconnected the battery charger so this is the way the truck sits and let's just see if there is any draw Zero the amp clamp. So this is the big wire that goes to the starter and alternator. Usually there's nothing on there. And then there's this smaller wire that goes to the fuse box. So you want to make sure you're zeroed out before you clamp onto the wire. And clamp on there. You know, 0.7. See unclamp. 0.3. So in this case the amp clamp is obviously not a, uh, you know, it'll catch a big draw, but something in less than an amp, we'll need to do an in series. But for now, let's see if it starts. Let's see if we can read all the codes and see where we go from here. All right, so we got the Think Tool Pros hooked up. Turn the key on, get some fresh air in here. It says service four wheel drive. Anything else? See if it starts. So absolutely no crank. All right. So let's go right into Chevy and do a full health report. See if there are any clues, and then look up a wiring diagram for the starting circuit. You know, it's controlled by the engine control module. Let's see if we can read the VIN. Okay, that's the correct VIN, 2003 Silverado four-wheel drive. It's light duty transfer case. And we got the auto two four, uh, two speed active, all wheel drive with actuated throttle control. Now let's see, does this have electronic throttle? Yeah, I think I see the TAC module. Yes, we have electronic throttle. Usually on these GM trucks it gives you a questionnaire. It does have dual zone HVAC manual. Base radio. No cassette player. <laughs> uh, it's asking me more questions. Under, okay, here we go. Smart scan. All right, so in the engine computer we have P0740. Torque converter clutch enable solenoid circuit, 785 shift solenoid control circuit, 1860 torque converter clutch solenoid control circuit. Interesting. Body control module, heating and air conditioning, instrument panel. We do have some U codes. So let's, um, we have that saved. Let's clear DTCs. See if these are hard faults.
and then turn the key off and try to start it. If it does not start, we'll see if any codes are set and go from there. All right, so all the codes that could be cleared are cleared. So we have some radio codes, don't care. U1000 in the passenger present system, don't really care. And headlamps on indicator circuit, don't really care. So let's back out. So we clear that, turn the key off. Service foil drive. It's definitely a no crank. Let's just go right into the engine computer. Read fault code. No DTCs. Okay. What's next? Data stream. So here, throttle control data, EVAP data, let's just do engine data one. See if this thing responds at all. Let's see, the, at least throttle position, can we get that? Vehicle theft deterrent. Let's look at those. Throttle. Okay. You can see the thing tool process is a little slow on these class two non-can vehicles. A snap-on Varus would be about five times faster. So let's depress the gas pedal. Does the throttle go up? It sure does. You see there's a pretty big lag, 100%. Release, back to 21%. So, Vehicle theft to turn fuel disable inactive, so everything should be should be good. By the way, active transfer case. It's saying you know service foil drive. So if we go into here, history diagnostic trouble codes. This will this is just for the transfer case control module. Let's see, class two data link malfunction. Last test failed. Interesting. For an axle control circuit, transfer case neutral control, da 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 da. So let's also clear these out. Yes. Okay. Let's just see if any current code set. Here we go. Front axle control circuit malfunction, transfer case neutral indicator circuit malfunction. Okay, so not really worried about that at the moment. Let's look up that starting system diagram. One quick check. I just want to see if I can bidirectionally command this fuel pump on. Yep, you can hear it. Okay, here's the diagram for the starting system. Pretty basic, so starter relay is the heart of it. Um, on the load side, we just have a constant battery power on um, the feed, and then that goes right to the starter. So that owner says, basically pin 87, you touch this to positive, it'll crank over. I guess we can try that real quick. Well, let's not try that right now. <laughs> but anyways, control side. So the feed for the control side comes from it's an automatic, so park neutral safety switch, ignition E fuse, 10 amp hot and start or run. And the control side is grounded by the powertrain control module. Okay, easy enough. So let's take out the starter relay and with a test light, now see this style of test light doesn't reach those pins, so let me get a uh, proper probe and we'll check this. We can manually energize the starter, see if that works, and then check for feed here on the control side with the ignition key on. And finally, does the PCM ground the starter wire? And how, when does it ground the starter wire? Well, the PCM from the ignition switch, this crank fuse, sends 
a signal to the PCM that you're requesting a crank. And then the PCM decides, okay, let's uh, turn on your starter relay. So that's the circuit layout. Let's do some checks. Okay, so I got a couple adapters here. So pin 30 is the top right corner. And I have a 5 amp test light hooked to battery ground. So if I touch this to pin 30, we should get a nice bright test light. We sure do. So that pin carries plenty of current. So we just ruled out one out of four. What's the next check? We can do pin 87, which is the other corner. So we can send voltage down this wire through a fuse and see if the truck cranks and starts. Okay, so I'm going to connect pins 30 to 87. Now let's just turn the key off for now. I just want to see if this if the starter cranks well. Okay, perfect. So load side, nothing wrong with that, except for we might have a bad relay. Let's check the control side. So first we can just put a small test light is you want to kind of match the current of the relay so maybe half an amp or 300 milliamps across there turn the key to crank if it doesn't light up we're chasing one of these legs okay so now let's um, I got the other two the control side pins 85 and 86 jump with my test leads test light to battery ground if it finds a power the light bulb will light up this is just one amp so let's turn the key on and see if either one of those two pins is hot. So check this one right here. So bottom right, hey, we got a light. And bottom left, we should have no light. That's probably the control pin. Okay, so we have power here, so our neutral safety switch is good. That's the top right. I'm sorry, bottom bottom right. Single-handed improves your dexterity skills. So watch these lights. I'll put the transmission in not in park. Okay, the light went out. Back in park. That's neutral right there, so park neutral safety switch works perfectly. Okay, so we're getting very close. The problem is going to be on that control pin. Let's jump the test light from, um, you know, across those two control pins. When we crank it, it should light up, but it won't. Okay, now I got the one amp test light across those two pins. And turn the key to crank. Obviously, nothing happens. Okay, now we want to see, is the PCM receiving a crank voltage input? I was looking for that on the data stream, couldn't find it. So let's go to the crank fuse, which is right here next to this washer relay. So this 10 amp. And let's see, let's pull it out and measure you know, see if we have voltage on either one of these pins. All right, so I got the crank fuse out, and we're checking the left pin first through a one amp test light to ground. Let's see if anything happens when we turn the key to crank. Nothing happens there. Doesn't mean Let's check the right pin now. Nothing there. Okay, so the problem here seems to be from the ignition switch to this crank fuse. So, very simple thing we can do as a bypass check to make sure everything else in the system works. Plug the relay back in and with the key on, take a test light from battery positive now and just touch that crank fuse. 
that will simulate the ignition switch being turned to start and then and we'll see if all the other things work and we'll, then we'll chase this ignition switch circuit okay test light from battery positive if it finds a ground it will light up let's touch that crank fuse I'll even put the fuse back in place well let's let's just touch the pins so the right pin nothing left pin the left pin goes to the PCM the right pin comes from the ignition switch we just determined that by using this amazing tool let's see you know let's let it warm up a little bit and then um, see why we don't have any voltage on this crank fuse coming from the ignition switch by the way as soon as the truck started I scanned it for codes and we have the 740 753 758 785 1860 I'm sure all these are related so it's either a power feed to the solenoid problem or a common ground problem uh, so we'll have to look at the wiring diagram from the transmission but it doesn't mean it's related to the starting problem so let's not get carried away here we uh, you know we'll keep this in mind we can even just save it as another report So this will just save these codes that we scanned it. We need to go get to this ignition switch and check that yellow wire that's coming out, see if we have uh, power. Okay, so I took the panels off and found the yellow wire right here. This is coming from our ignition switch, fat yellow wire. So test light. From battery positive now, if it finds the ground, it'll light up. Let's uh, let's do the bypass check. If we touch that wire with a positive test light, the truck should crank and start. Let's try it. Let's try that again. Okay, it's saying theft, theft enabled. Um, but if we go from ignition, or from battery ground, so test light, now if it finds a power, it should light up. On this yellow wire, I'm pretty sure we won't see any voltage, but let's verify that. So key on, crank it, nothing. If we go from positive, There you go, perfect. Starts and runs fine. There we go, theft to turn, start enable signal not received. Okay, so I'm not too worried about that. So we're going after this ignition switch. So we touch that positive test light right there at connector C9 or C201 pin 9 and the truck fired up fine. So the problem is going to be here. So let's check this red wire A10 C201 that comes from you know it's a constant power. But you can see the power of the bypass test. All you need is a test light, at least in this case, and you can see that everything else works. We're narrowing it down. We're going after this ignition switch. So the problem is between the battery and this yellow wire. So let's check the other side of the ignition switch. Okay, so looking at the starting diagram, we see that there's no voltage on this yellow wire at connector C201 pin C9. Now, what about the input to the ignition switch? Let's check A10. Should be a red wire on connector C201 and just so we don't make any mistakes here is the connector pinout and the power distribution diagram actually shows all of the wires going to this 
this ignition switch. So A10 red should be hot at all times. Yellow, that's the one we're worried about, goes to the crank fuse. And on the next page, we have another positive feed, ignition B fuse 40 amp. That's another red wire, C1 on connector C201, red and white. And that goes to you know, these wires here. Like the pink is our ignition run or start. So we can do all these checks at connector C201. So let's look at the pin out. So if you're looking at the connector this way, for example, our yellow wire is in the bottom left corner, one pin up, that would be pin C9 right there. <clears throat> so this would be the bottom of the connector as we're looking at it from the dash side. So let's just double check that C9 is, yep, yellow crank voltage. That's correct. So here I wrote down the main, you know, the big wires going to the ignition switch. There's C9, yellow, start, uh, crank voltage. And that comes from, uh, which one was it here? Our distribution diagram, A10, C201. So A10, red, battery positive, that should be same row but on the other side of the connector. A test light, if it finds a positive it'll light up so let's check that red wire there's no there's nothing on that let's check the other red wire see that one's good that one is C1 so this one is bad that would have totally explain our no crank and where else if we're missing feed right here, what else could be missing? Well, we wouldn't have any voltage to the brake fuse, four-wheel drive fuse, cruise control, HVAC. Uh, let's see, the next diagram, B. We would not have any power to the TBC or ignition zero. So that's, that's our main problem. I think this will explain everything. So we're missing power between this ignition A fuse 40 amp, so we can check that, and A10 on C201. That's pretty cool. Let's go find this ignition A fuse. Well, ignition A fuse right there, 40 amp, third one over. I don't know, it looks, looks fine to me. Let's just check those pins. So if our test light is still connected to battery ground, we have our lead right here. Let's see. That lead is definitely hot. So we're missing. We're definitely missing power. Now keep in mind this problem was intermittent at first, now it's completely dead. So I'm sure we'll find some green crusties between this pin and that fuse. So let's go hunting. So that was one hour of diagnostics. Now we're gonna say to the customer, we narrowed it down basically from here to here. This stretch of wire. So we can pop open the fuse box, find C1 B12 see if there's power on there pass through right to this connector all right so we're looking for connector C1 pin B12 on this underhood fuse block should be a red wire this connector C1 fuse block under hood it's 68 pins and Let's see here, like A3 is yellow crank voltage, so you can orient yourself. So A3 is gonna be yellow, so this is A3. So B is this row, and 12 is all the way down there. Should be a red battery positive. Okay, so B12 right there. Test light, from battery negative, if it finds a positive, obviously it will 
light up. So now, with this ignition A fuse, so this pin right here is hot, the top one. This one, if we put the fuse in, B12 should light up. Let's see if it does. So here, B12, absolutely no light. Interesting. How can we prove that, you know, this fuse could potentially be bad. So we know the top pin is hot. Let's put a test light from battery positive on this bottom pin and see, like a 5 amp test light, and see if my little light lights up on the bottom pin. That will rule out this fuse. All right, so now, I know this looks like a mess, but from battery positive, we're going through a 5 amp test light connected to this bottom pin. So you can see the bottom pin is now hot, so is the top. We should definitely have power on B12 now. And we definitely do not have power on B12. So the problem, we narrowed it down, is between this pin and B12. So somewhere in this fuse block. So what we can do right now is a safe bypass test. Just connect battery power to this wire and the truck should start and run. Now I don't know if the owner's gonna get a brand you know, replacement fuse box from the junkyard or whatever. Obviously this truck is not a virgin. Otherwise I can tell them, hey, you know, take one of these aftermarket things. You know, is this like a 40 amp fuse? I don't know where that goes. Maybe some aftermarket stereo system that doesn't exist anymore. Hey, look, 40 amp fuse. So basically, you can unwrap that and just stuff this into pin B12 and you'll be fine. So let's, uh, let's do that bypass check, check. By the way, I know people are gonna ask, did you check the pin on the connector? Yes, there's B12, it's perfect. It's also perfect on the male side, right here. So this, this fuse box, you can't take it apart because it's like a module without computers, it's just pins and routing and stuff. But let's uh, let's just jump power through a fuse to B12 and make sure the truck works as intended. Okay, here's my temporary bypass. I'm just going through a 15 amp fuse, even though it's supposed to be a 40, but we just have power going to pin B12 from battery positive. Let's make sure this red wire right here on A10 is now hot. And it is, so both these red wires should be hot at all times. And now, the truck should start and run. Not set any codes whatsoever. So let's clear all the codes out. Just try to start it and run it for a couple times to make sure the Communication codes don't come back. We don't see check four wheel drive anymore, I don't think. Clear DTCs. Yep. Okay. No DTCs, I love it. We can even go to clear transfer case DTCs, yes. Okay. Yay, no trouble code system normal. Four-wheel drive works. That's it. One missing power feed to the ignition switch. One main power feed. Ignition A 40 amp fuse. Problem is internal to the fuse box, which is unusual. Usually, you know, you hope it's a wiring problem so you can fix it, no parts required. This you can fix, no parts required, but the problem is internal in the fuse box. So pretty cool. That's it for this diagnosis. I guess the, the shop owner will make a decision on whether to do that or um, you know, get a replacement box. That's it. So by the way, this is two hour 
Diag Charge 1 to find, you know, get to the ignition switch and see we have, we're missing a power feed. And the second hour is tracing where is that power feed missing. We found it at the bottom of the fuse box. It's not there. But wiring is good. The bypass check, bypass test proves that. Um, you can see how powerful the bypass test is. As long as you're careful, either a test light or a fuse, if it's meant to have power, you can safely apply power to it and see if stuff returns to life. So thanks a lot for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. All right, time for bonus footage. The shop owner authorized the repairs. Cheap way. We're just going to chop this wire off right at the fuse box and splice it into this bundle of aftermarket, you know, this aftermarket fuse, which is a nice big 40 amp. Now, where do those wires go? He told me a little backstory. This problem, when it was intermittent, someone else was trying to fix it and they leaned on the fuse box and then they had power to the ignition switch. So they were close. But they assumed that these two wires went to the ignition switch. So they just, you know, replaced that wire without doing any testing and it didn't fix the problem. And I unwrapped it. And guess what? The guy, um, the shop owner said it was repaired by a former, like, communications or telephone company guy who uses crimping tools okay so he must be good guess what when I put that pulled the tape off this little crimp came right off it was not tight whatsoever so say what you want about crimping with special tools I mean this connections tight that looks like legit but what I'm gonna do is probably reuse this crimp it on and then heat it up with a torch it just melts solder in there so it'll reinforce the whole connection and then we'll call this truck fixed all right so here's the finished product so I got four wires stuffed in this crimp I recrimped it first I opened it up then recrimped it now what I want to do is just heat it up with a torch the soldering iron will not get this thing hot enough and just melt some solder right into those copper strands So this will satisfy the crimpers and the solders. So we're using both at once. Okay, you can actually see the solder wicking through all the way down into the wires. I'll let that cool down. We'll do a little tug test on it, wrap it up. Uh, right now, the truck actually should start if I put this fuse in, but let's, uh, let's wrap that up first. All right, here's the finished product. I even have this little cool cap. I actually like this. It's like a rubber cap that stretches over itself. Fuse is in, truck should start and run. Absolutely no problems. Try to find the key. love it satisfaction still no parts required and I found this other crap going to what is this corrosion control device yeah corrosion control device that works great Oh yeah, a little more bonus footage. One of the customer complaints was battery draw. Well, the truck is asleep. We have 34 milliamps. That's not bad, but that's not great. I want to see less than 10. I'm going to unplug this corrosion control device. We're down to 15. I guess that... Let me plug it back in and see if anything changes. No, 15, that's that's perfect. Yeah, happy with that. Done. We'll see you in the next one.